some kind of gang with magnetic mechanics and materials. So what are we doing here? We're making a shear of force or a shear of moment diagrams for this beam here. So let's go ahead and get started with that. So how are we going to do this, right? Well, we want to start with our force body diagram, and we want to find all of the unknowns because those are going to be very valuable when we're making our shear and moment diagrams. So our unknowns are A and Y and B and Y. I went ahead and drew this force body diagram here. Pretty simple stuff, right? A is a roller, B is a pin, but there's no X reaction, so we know there's no B of X. So let's go ahead and find out what's happening in A and B. So of course, if we want to find out what A and B are, we're going to take the moments around a point. So let's take the sum of the moments around A, set that equal to zero, and we're going to solve for B of Y. So first of all, we have this negative 250 times that four feet. Then this distributed load uh, is pushing the other way, so that's going to be added to it. Actually, this is a positive, right? Because this is making us go uh, clockwise or counterclockwise. So this is making us go clockwise, so we're going to subtract it. So we're going to subtract that 150 pound feet, but then we need to multiply it by that six feet to get that total force of this pushing down. And then its center is acting three feet away, so we're going to multiply it by a distance of three. So then B of Y is pushing up, it's going to make us want to go counterclockwise. We're going to add B of Y plus that six feet. And then finally, this 250 is going to be a negative. It's going to be negative 250 times 10. So making sure I did all this right. Yep. Uh, so yeah, then if you solve for B of Y, I'm going to write this over here. Um, actually, I'm going to write it over here. B of Y is equal to 700 pounds. And then you can tell by symmetry or you can tell by taking some of the forces in the Y that AY is also equal to 700 pounds. So we can go ahead and replace those here, 700 pounds in our force body diagram. Nice, 700 pounds. And now let's go ahead and find out what's happening, right? So we want to find equations or functions in between zero and four, which is from here to force A. Then we want to find a function between A and B, and then we want to find a function between B and the end. So let's start with zero to four, and let's make a cut. So we're making a cut basically anywhere between zero and four feet, so it's going to look like this, right? So we still have that negative 250 pounds. And then if we're going to draw our shear in, when you take a cut from the right side, our shear points downward. So this is B. Uh, let's label that V of 1. And then this is moment of 1. So to solve for these, so we can tell V of 1 if we take some of the forces in the Y equal to zero. It's going to be negative 250 minus B of 1. And that's going to tell us that V of 1 is equal to 250. So it's going to be that constant for that entire first period. Uh, let's see, I guess it's going to be pounds, right? So then our moment equation, right? So this distance is x. The distance going this way is x. So if we want to take the sum of the moments around here, right? It's equal to zero. Um, ooh, where am I going? Okay, I'm right here. All right, so we're taking some of the moments here. It's going to be moment one. And then this is making us go that way, so we're going to add 250, but times that x distance away. So if you go ahead and subtract it from the other side, you get moment one is equal to negative 250x. Um, I forgot a negative here. Should be a minus. minus. There we go. So those are our two equations for this first one. Let's go up to our next cut. So we get rid of this. Go ahead and get rid of that. So now we're at four feet here. We have that 700, and then we also have this distributed load. So we're gonna draw that 700 in. We have this distributed load. All right. And then our shear again is gonna point down here, and our moment's gonna point up. We're gonna label this shear two and moment two. Okay, so now we're solving for these. So let's start with shear. So V2, or so let's take some of the forces in the line. Set it equal to zero. We have negative 250 plus 700. Um, okay, I'm gonna have to write sideways. So then this distributed load is 150 pound feet. Right, 150 pounds per foot. And we're traveling X this way. So if we want to describe that, well it's gonna be 150 times however much distance we've traveled, but we need to subtract that four. 
So it's gonna be minus 150 pound per feet, but that feet is gonna be uh, four feet plus X, or, but it's gonna be X, right? Because the X includes this whole distance, but we need to subtract off that four feet because the distributed load is not in that four feet. So it's gonna be X minus four. And finally, we have V2 is negative, so V2. Okay, so then we have this equation. So let's add it up. Uh, if you do this, you get V2. I'm gonna write it up here. V2 is equal to negative 150X plus 1,050. Right, so yeah, move that V2 to the other side. This becomes 550, basically, and yeah. Okay, so now we can go into the moments. So let's do the moments. So if we do some of the moments around where we take that cut, it's equal to zero. So we have moment of two is there. Then we have this distributed load, so it's gonna be pushing us positive, really. So it's gonna be 150 pounds per feet times, right, four minus x, or x minus four feet again. But then we need to multiply it by its distance away, which it's gonna be x distance away, but its center of mass is x divided by two distance away. That's why the x is divided by two, it's because it's that distance away divided by two. And in fact, same thing again, it's the distance is x minus four away divided by two. Okay, what's next? Um, yeah, okay, so then let's move on to the 700 pound one. So we're going down here, so that 700 is pushing us backwards, so we're gonna subtract 700. Then its distance away is gonna be x minus four. Then, uh, then what's left is 250 pounds. It's gonna be uh, positive 250, and then its distance away is just whatever that x is. So you're left with this equation. I'll make sure it's right before I move on. Yeah, that looks good. So if you solve, if you simplify all this, you move the moment over, and you simplify it all, you get that moment two is equal to negative 75x squared plus 1050x minus 4,000. Okay, so we got that equation. Now we can finally move on to our last cut. So let's get rid of all of this. Not necessary anymore. If we go over to here, and then we're taking a cut here. So let's look at what we have now. Well, we have this 700 again. We can simplify this distributed load into a much simpler 900 pounds pushing down. Right, 150 pounds feet times six feet is just 900 pounds pushing down. And we don't need that to be a distributed load anymore because we're outside of that zone. So then if we're drawing our shear, V3 is down, moment to three is around like that. Okay, and then remember we're going X is this way. Okay, so then if we want to take some of the forces in the Y, we're gonna have negative 250 plus 700 minus 900 plus 700 minus V of three. All right, so then that is going to give you, let me do the triple math, 200, 500. Yeah, it's going to give you V of 3 is equal to, okay, I'm going to need more space. Oof, getting messy. V of 3 is 250 pounds, so a positive 350 pounds this time. Okay, now we find a moment. I'll keep that. So then we take the sum of the moments, it's equal to zero. So we have the moment of three, the 750 is pushing us, uh, what's the distance? Okay, let's also label this six feet. That is negative, right? So we're gonna subtract that 700. And then we have to take X, but subtract that 10 this time. So it's X minus 10, because we've traveled X this far away, but we need to subtract that 10 total feet. That's not the distance away. Okay, then we have this 900 pounds, that's gonna be a positive 900. And then this is gonna be X minus, it goes four feet, and then X another three feet, so we need to subtract seven from that. So then we're at this 700, so that's gonna be a minus 700. This becomes X minus four feet. And then plus that 250 at the end, plus X feet. Make sure I did this right, I hope so. It looks good. All right, so then if you simplify this, you get moment three is equal to 250x minus 350, 3,500.
Okay, so we have all of these equations now, so we solve for part A basically, and now we just need to draw them. So I'm gonna erase all of this, and we're gonna draw these diagrams. I guess I can get rid of this too for more space. So let's start with the, or the shear diagram. Shear diagram is usually easier to draw. So this is x in meters, or in feet. And then this is shear in pounds. So what's our first equation? Negative 250 and it's constant. So we're gonna travel at that negative 250 until our first intersection, which is at four. I'm gonna just label these lines down. This is four and this is 10 feet. So there we go, we're at negative 250. And then what's our next line say? Well, negative 150 plus 1050. So if you wanna find that point where we start at, you're gonna plug in four feet here. So you're gonna get negative 600 plus 1500. That tells us we're gonna start at 1450, or 450, I mean. So here's 450. And if you wanna find our end point, we're gonna plug in 10 to this. So it's 150 times 10, so 1500. So minus 1500 plus 15, 1050, which is gonna be minus 450. So down here somewhere, so minus 450. And of course, that's just gonna be a linear line, just like that. And so it's gonna kind of have a jump there. So then our final, it, it's gonna end up at 250, and just until the end. So it's gonna be here to 250, and then it's gonna go down at that 14 feet. And there's our shear diagram. So not too bad. Okay, so then let's draw our moment diagram. So this is X in feet still, and this is moment in pound feet. Okay, so how does this start? Well, we start out at negative 250x. So we're going to start at 0, and we're going to go down 250x. So we're going to go to 4, so at, at x is equal to 4, or moment is equal to negative 1,000. So we're going to go down here to negative 1,000. Cool. And then let's look at our next equation. So moment two is negative 75x squared plus 1050x minus 4,000. So let's find out what happens at four, right? This is four. Uh, so we wanna find out what happens at four and at 10. We wanna basically see what happens at the start and at the end. And we know we're gonna have a parabola. So at the start, let's plug in four. If you plug in four to this, what do you get? Well, do you plug in four, do you get negative 1,000? So we know we start here, which is cool. We start where we ended. Then if you plug in 10 for this, you also get negative 1,000. So we're gonna start here and end it here at negative 1,000. So what happens at the beginning? Well, we can plug in any point in between to see what direction our parabola is gonna shape. We know that there's this negative here, so our parabola is kinda of gonna have a negative curve to it. So we can kinda of just go like this. And so maybe we wanna find out what this point is. We know it's gonna be halfway between four and 10 because of how this parabola works. So we know we can plug in seven. So if we plug in seven to this equation, we get that that point is negative 325. Oops, 325. Cool. All right, so then we just have to finish up this graph. So our final moment is 250x, so it's gonna be a positive increasing line, minus 3,500. So again, we're gonna plug in 10 to this, you get 2,500 minus 3,500. We're gonna be right at that negative 1,000, and then we're gonna increase four, or four times that, we're gonna end at zero again, basically, is what I'm saying. So here's what our moment diagram looks like. Well, so that's how you solve this problem. Uh, it's, a, it's a big process, right? You gotta make sure to go step by step, and there's a lot to consider, but you'll start to realize that all these moment questions, or all the diagram questions, are really similar to each other. So check out my channel if you want more help. Uh, yeah, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.